Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 6 of Starflight. After having been, um, well, after having our ass unceremoniously handed to us in the previous episode, I'm heading back with a new, well, shoot to kill policies, let's say. We're uh, going to head over back through the same set of uh, hyperspace or, you know, continuum fluxes. We're just trying to find the coordinates that we used previously. Again, using autopilot to, or using cruise control to keep us traveling in the correct direction. There we are there. We're going to fly through that one and that will bring us into the nebula where the Gazertoid live. And hopefully we will get onto the home planet or to whatever planet that is without getting uh, destroyed this time. There will be some fast navigating and uh, attempts to get to uh, get to this inner planet as quickly as possible. Now, you'll notice, interestingly enough, that this is a a red star, which means that uh, the temperature is lower than, say, a yellow star, right? And that's kind of interesting, or it's kind of cool, because you see that they've actually used procedural, you know, the procedural content models the fact that the habitable planets are nearer to the star in this case. Oh, we have some unidentified objects, and I'm going to have to make a run for it in this case, because I don't want to talk to them. I want to sh I want to run away. Uh, this is not the best way. Please don't shoot me. I'm not going to even hail you until I think I'm out of range. I'm not even going to hail them. I'm just going to keep going and hope that uh, I don't... Uh, ah, there. That I ho keep going and hope that they don't actually shoot me. That's pretty good. They don't have missiles, so they have to get in really close. They don't have shields, or if they have shields, then they're, they're not activated because we're in a in the nebula. The nebula mess with the shields, so I can't use them. That's why all I have is armor, and I wish I didn't have all this armor, because the armor will slow us down, and it's making escaping these things a relatively tedious procedure. Let's let's analyze them while we're here. Select sensor targets. What do we think? We have Bio 100, Energy 100. It's 30,000 tons. Uh, and it contains Endurium, all whatever. Analysis says it's a scout vessel. 120 t time, 129 times my thing. Shield status is unknown, but the weapons are definitely armed. But I am definitely running away, because running away is the most efficient thing for me to do with my supreme speed here, or my superior speed, let's say. If they get around me, then that'll be a problem. But I think if I just keep, if I talk to them, then it'll establish me as an enemy. So I'm not going to talk to them and they will, I'll let them try to figure out whether I'm one of these air breathing scumbags or not. I, oh, repent, air breathers, repent. The hour of judgment is at hand. But leaving really, even encounter, leaving encounter. Okay, let's keep going. We get one more. Yes, we've got to get straight into orbit around this thing. Blue planet? Aha, yes, I'm going to orbit this. Scanners indicate unidentified object. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to charge this dude and start firing weapons. Oh, man, he's firing weapons already. Alien hit by class 4 laser. I'm just going to fly right past it. The alien vessel destroyed. That is what I like to hear. That an alien vessel has lowered its shields. So we, they actually leave a little debris cloud around. If I go to the bridge, ask the captain, we can actually go into the cargo and... Oh, we pick up some endurium, magnesium, molybdenum, tin. All these wonderful juicy items which we, of course, hopefully will use to uh, improve our profit margin and everything else. Now, uh, once we get in, we'll go, once we get into orbit, we'll save the game, and that will uh, lay the way for our exploration of the planet. There will not be any aliens on the planet, and I don't think they can attack you while you're in orbit or when you lift off. So I should be safe once I've initiated orbital maneuvers. Initiating orbital maneuver, and there it is: a green and blue planet suspended in the green nebula. And the occasional red star, things like that. Nebula in this are always green. Now, uh, let's go to the science officer and see what he thinks of this this planet orbiting near this red star. Wow, Bio 100, Mineral 80. This is a, a bountiful world, both in life and minerals. And mineral wealth, even. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, mercury, iron, and aluminium. Let's see what it says. Analysis. Planet. Orbit number one. Liquid surface. 0.76 gravity. Thin atmosphere. 
temperate to searing temperatures and moderate weather. You know what? I think this is a good planet for colonization. We'll recommend, yes, I shall recommend this planet, and we shall call it Lath, because it seems like it's actually quite a hospitable planet. Now we've saved the planet, or saved the game, we're going to land on the surface. And we have to pick a place to land. And what we're looking for is ruins. We're looking for alien ruins that will have clues to... Ah, you know what? There, that's a green area there. Just all that green, that will let us go far and wide and look for ruins which may have some clues as to what we're actually looking for. Uh, the speci well, the clues that we had previously didn't tell us where on this planet is. They just told us that this was where they traced us. Um, the first planet is the life-bearing planet, so that seems like an obvious place to go. Plus, they had a spacecraft in orbit. I suspect there are something here has a... Something here probably has uh, the cloaking device we are looking for. Unfortunately, we don't know what the cloaking device is like, and we have to search an entire planet. So, uh, absence any other clue, this is going to be a case of more or less uh, you know, checking every single every single location possible. <laughs> okay, and there's a lot of um, a lot of blue stuff here. Ah, uh, dear. Okay, well, let's start heading around here. I don't know what I can do, but I guess uh, do this, enable that. No, actually, no, I shouldn't do that. Okay, well, we're just going to have to start exploring. And this could take some while, so don't be surprised if I cut my way through this. Captain's Log, 12th time lope. Once again we are exploring the surface of this alien world in the hopes to finding the location of the secret cloaking device. As has been speculated, perhaps it is in fact itself cloaked, and will therefore stymie any attempts to find it. However, we continue looking in ruins with the intention of finding a clue as to its location. Oh, we found a message. Read. Ah, uh, what does it say? The only thing decipherable in some alien writings are planned to record this. 12 north by 32 east. Aha, I think we have the location of our research station or wherever. That'll be the place we're going to go to. That is awesome. Uh, but there are more ruins. Let's continue to investigate these ruins because ruins uh, bring us all sorts of wonderful things. Things which will potentially make our spacecraft even better, or perhaps will just tell us... Oh, look, Endurium. Endurium. Um, actually, the excitement of finding Endurium is kind of wearing off now that my cargo cargo hold is mostly full of this stuff. It is... Uh, well, we're going to be filling up our spacecraft with this, to be honest. We have another old tomb, uh, I don't know, ruin here. Oh no, Lurker has been injured! He clearly pushed the pushed the envelope a little too much and got punished for his attempts to uh, anger the Kerbal gods. And uh, no, there are no Kerbals in Starflight. Maybe he angered the Phlegmac or the Ulek or something. They have K's in their names. Uh, another, another set of ruins. Any clues here? Any more info here? Nothing in this one either. Let's keep looking around. We have one set of coordinates, but if we, you know, if we really want to investigate, we're going to continue to hit all of the the ruins we can. And we're down to 50%. Um, let's just get this one and then limp back to base. Cargo. Nothing here. Okay, well, continue down and see what else I can find. So I'm going to try and stay off those mountain tops. That will hopefully save me from any, uh, from that whole embarrassed running out of fuel situation that I keep on running into. I have not yet managed to lose my ATV. Oh look, more runes and a gizmo. Oh, we have a rubber widget. Ooh, -er. and a message. Aha! Amidst piles of alien books, we find coordinates. Ah, oh, the Pythagoras cluster, the Pythagoras constellation. So Pythagoras constellation, that is really important because we know that the planet Earth or the Sol system is part of the Pythagoras co uh, co constellation. So now we know the coordinates of the constellation, we know where we can go to find the planet Earth and therefore 
perhaps where we can go to find those awesome old tombs and uh, you know ancient ruins and oh yeah well the planet earth as well the Meccans told us all about a couple of things about the institute uh, where it was located about the um, about the research station at the north pole of Mars and uh, also told that there's a, a mining planet nearby called Mardan 4 I think so we gotta find out you know which one where these places are right so we'll, we'll go to that location next after we have escaped after we found the cloaking device of course okay we are very close to running out of fuel but i think we'll get back just carefully yes there we go hello ship just limping home on vapors uh or whatever it's not like a you know you can vaporize electricity it's uh plasma right if anything Okay, so now we have our clues. We're ready to launch back into orbit. Lo nope, no, 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 no. Launch, open viewport, no, confirm launch. Yes, and let's once more gaze upon the beautifully green sky, serene in its beauty and all that. Okay, so we are going to land, and we need to select the site. The site will be... 12 north by 32 east, and this is kind of hard, 32, 32 east, 12 north, okay, and now we're going to descend to the surface, and hopefully there will be some obvious site here where we'll have our cloaking device, and also hopefully the cloaking device will actually help us escape this uh, hostile territory, because I, I don't want to be getting into too many fights right now. Initiating all integrity check. Hull check complete. Activating all terrain vehicle. And we have a ruin. We have a ruin with a gizmo, a widget, an alien artifact. Something nearby. Let me see what it says. Gargle. We have a shimmering ball. Could this in fact be our cloaking device? Well, let's see if there's any other ruins in the area. Because this is 11 north by 32 east. So maybe that is not what I'm actually looking for. Um, no, I guess that's the nearest one. Those are further south, so that must be the ruin that has the cloaking device. Yay, I now have the cloaking device. Well, let's, uh, let's make best use of our, t our time here. Let's fill up the cargo on the spacecraft with more, you know, bounties, more treasures from this part of the world. Something that will tell us more about the universe in interesting ways. Or something which we can sell for profit. And then maybe a little bit of knowledge. Because, you know, it's nice to have some sort of knowledge. But profit is also good as well. I do, you know. I mean, honestly, with the star about to explode in a year or so, you would think I would be less interested in the money side of things. Or you think they would be spending a little more cash uh, supporting their people. Nothing in that one. Okay, come on. We've got to find some ruins. Some ruins which are blessed, which are are uh, apportioned with large amounts of endurium. Endurium which I shall sell for money, money, money. Look around, look around, and nothing. Okay, uh, let's maybe just... We're almost full anyway. I mean, we, we spent like an hour, I think, traveling to different sites before we decide before we finally found these clues so uh hopefully i think i'm just gonna embark see where we're going what's our status come on come on there we go 94 percent cargo that's pretty good and we've got a bit of aluminium 126 cubic meters of endurium now that is something to be quite proud of that'll be a block five by five by five meters we also have Tons of, oh, it's, this is a message we got earlier. Oh, there is a black egg device and some flagmac ruins in the third planet, etc., etc. Oh, that's, we picked that message up. I guess you can actually pick up some of these messages and carry them with you. That would have been a good thing to do with those other ones. Okay. Head out once more, see if we can find some more, some more treasures in the area. It's overcast. Let's head up kind of northeastwards. I see, I see something here. Well, maybe we'll just grab those minerals, because launching on an empty, uh, empty spacecraft is not, 
is not efficient. We're going to have to travel a long way back, and the more profit we can make, the more we can hold our heads high when we head back to my gentleman's club and all these other fellow pilots and their space... I don't know, space-faring this. Okay, there's more aluminium. That will hopefully... Uh, well, hopefully if I get attacked this time, I'll be able to fix my lasers. I think I'm just going to go and grab that and get out of here because there's not much else to do here. Uh, oh, 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 completely overshooting once again. There we go. There isn't enough room in the ship's hold. We get four cubic meters of antony, antimony, antimony. Oh, it's antimony. As in, is that like a, you know, Billy Idol, money, money? You should come now, it's Auntie Moni. Yeah, never mind. I love that song, but uh, you're not going to hear me perform it here because, of course, you know all these wonderful copyright problems that YouTube is having at this time. Confirm launch. We are back in orbit. And now we are going to break orbit we're, and we're going to try and sneak our way home. Leave orbit. Okay, so it's going to go to the right there, going to go eastwards. Top speed, weapons armed, and it looks like... Captain, I'm detecting motion! Okay, navigator, full speed ahead, get us out of here. Oh, oh man, we're surrounded! Oh man, fire the weapon! Oh, weapon! Oh, we destroyed one of the alien vessels. Excellent! You know, maybe this, uh, this cloaking device may in fact be making all the difference. Alien hit by class 4 laser. They got no class... Alien hit, but took no damage. Ah, oh, he's gazertoid with their sneaky anti-missile shield. That is not what I like. Alien vessel destroyed. That means there's just one of them, and I'm down to a sliver of armor. I might as well have no armor, but you know what? I think that I can take this thing down. It's just a question of getting in and taking, using the cloaking device to my advantage. And I keep firing those. There we go. Missile, laser, laser. Nope, nope, nope. Of course, every time you fire a weapon, it takes a small amount of your uh, endurium away from you. So the trick is to fire them. Well, the trick is not to fire too much. Otherwise, you just end up burning all your energy away and not being able to carry it with you. Shields disabled! Alien vessel destroyed! Excellent. Haha. -ha. They disabled my shields. They were very smart. They thought they would beat my defenses, but instead, they realized we were in a nebula and our shields don't do anything. Leaving the system. Come on. Yes, we are now free of the nebula. We have no armor, but uh, we have a shield system. Mm, another unidentified object. Cloaking device now active. Who is this then? Science officer, report. What is? Your, what do your sensors say? Come on. This looks like... Uh, it's one of those. Is that a gazertoid? Or is that a spemin? The spemin are the, the ones that uh, are like totally, you know, frightened of us. Ah, well, and I guess I moved beyond their range and they uh, didn't follow me. That's cool. Well, let's continue. Let's find that uh, continuum anomaly so that we can head back closer to uh, to Earth. There we go. Continuum flux. Yes. Of course, one of the reasons I'm interested in going to Earth is to get something called a ring device, which lets you find continuum fluxes. But I don't need that because I have a navigator whose skill is above 200. Now, if you have an all human crew, then you need things like the continue the, the ring device to find uh, continuum fluxes. And you need, uh, there's another gizmo that helps you translate certain language. Oh, oh, lot of motion detected here. Lot of motion, not good. And this is a star. Uh, no, wait. Commencing system penetration. And I think I've actually gone to the wrong system. This is the one next to Earth. The one where I was at the third second planet. And I found that microfilm that revealed the location of a mysterious black egg device. Who knows what that might be? I'm not convinced that... Uh, <laughs> I'm not convinced of its importance just yet. 
but I will no doubt investigate it. I want to make sure that I'm able to deal with what the bad guys throw at me. Okay, navigator set course for Earth Central. Set course for the star base. Second orbit around the star. Excellent. Docking. Dock with starport. Okay, come on. Yeah, space dock doors closing. We are now docked. Umbilicals attached. And we pressurized. We can now leave the bridge. Disembark and head over to the star base to actually sell our... I wouldn't say ill-gotten gains, but our hard-won gains. gains that, yeah. Our hard-won loot, let's see. So yeah, we got to go over here and actually scan all the gizmos that we found, right? So that's... Yeah, you click on scan, and of course it takes a second to think. Shimmering ball, I think that's a cloaking device. Yes, what do we see? This artifact seems to be a cloaking device. As far as we can tell, it should operate automatically during combat. Hit any key to continue. Okay, that's great. All the other stuff is probably garbage, so I'm just going to, you know, scan it. A little value as an alien curio and nothing else. Oh, wow, 2,500 for that. That's actually pretty profitable. 300, not so interesting. Button to box. Okay, now pay a visit to operations just to see what the status is regarding their quest. Recommendation 1, a lathe. Good work, you have located an optimal planet. You have earned a bonus of 45,000 monetary units. Way! One of our ships has reported that the Thryn are offered to buy artifacts from them at inflated rates. We urge you not to do this. Inasmuch as it may further relations with them, this is understandable. But we do not wish to sacrifice what we might be able to learn from these artifacts. We have just lost another of our own ships. This time it was at 192-152. Any ships in the area may wish to investigate, but we advise extreme caution. And due to an increased demand resulting from stepped-up colonization efforts, the price of Endurium has been raised to 1,500 monetary units, which makes me very rich. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.